Did multiple jealous kings poison their wives, or was the truth even deadlier? The Princess of Wales' recent cancer diagnosis isn't the only time that this illness has affected the British royal family, nor is it the only time that rumors have been flying as a result. In early 2024, Catherine, Princess of Wales, disappeared from public view for months. Kensington Palace announced that she'd undergone surgery, but the lack of details fueled a frenzy of rumors. The theories ranged from her death to a Brazilian butt lift, but the reality was both simple and tragic. On Friday, March 22nd, Kate released a short video in which she revealed that she had major abdominal surgery in London in January. As she explained, At the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I am now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock. Catherine had waited so long to reveal her diagnosis publicly because she was still figuring out how to deliver the news to her children and help them process it before everyone else found out. Once the public knew what was happening, many apologized for the rumors and condolences poured in from around the world. Her diagnosis also meant that three members of the royal family were undergoing cancer treatment at the same time. But this disease is nothing new for the royal family. In fact, their history with cancer dates back hundreds of years. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert weren't even married yet when they decided that their future second son would eventually become ruler of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha in what is now Germany. That son, Prince Alfred, was born in 1844, but he had many decades to fill before he actually got the job. So he joined the Royal Navy, was given the title Duke of Edinburgh, was made a Knight of the Garter, got married to a daughter of the Russian Tsar, and had some children. Then, in 1893, his uncle died and he finally became Duke of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, but he wouldn't fill that role for very long. He had been in ill health for some time, which probably had something to do with how much alcohol he drank. In 1900, Alfred traveled to Vienna to see several specialists. They discovered a cancerous growth on his tongue, although the Duke wasn't actually told how bad his diagnosis was. He went to one of the ducal homes to convalesce, thinking he would be better in no time. But his condition deteriorated rapidly, with the cancer nearly suffocating him, resulting in the need for a tracheotomy. He died on July 30, 1900, at the age of 55. Shortly after Henry VIII became king in 1509, he married Catherine of Aragon, the widow of his brother Arthur. While they were happy together for many years, their lack of a son who lived past infancy eventually resulted in Henry going to great lengths to rid himself of his queen. Unlike some of his later wives, Catherine didn't lose her head, though Henry did everything else he could to make her life miserable. Whatever love they'd shared, Catherine had to go. Catherine was effectively banished from court and made to live in increasingly uncomfortable castles, and most of her furniture was taken away. She wasn't allowed to see her only living child, the future Mary I, and her friends had to ask Henry permission to visit her. However, the king's subjects still supported her, which annoyed him greatly. Henry was kept well informed of Catherine's increasingly bad health. He believed that she might have dropsy and expected her to die any day, who those close to the king knew would make him extremely happy. Catherine was 50 years old when she died on January 7, 1536. When her body was cut open in preparation for burial, it was discovered that her heart had a black growth on it. At the time, many thought this proved that Henry had poisoned Catherine, but it was most likely melanomic sarcoma, a cancer of the heart. Anne Hyde was the mother of two queens of England, although she didn't live long enough to hold that position herself. She was a commoner who controversially married the future James II. At the time, he was the Duke of York, and his older brother had just become Charles II during the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. Hyde gave birth to two daughters who survived, the future queens Mary II and Anne. But perhaps her biggest influence on British history was converting to Catholicism and encouraging her husband to do the same, which would result in him losing his throne decades later to one of their daughters. Even though James caused a huge uproar by marrying someone so far below his social standing, he still cheated on his hard-won wife. She also had at least one affair. But her husband's infidelity hurt Hyde deeply, and she found solace in food and jewelry. She was also suffering from declining health, although nobody quite realized how serious it was. So her death from breast cancer in 1671 at age 34 came suddenly and unexpectedly. Anne of Cleves was by far the luckiest of all of Henry VIII's spouses. She became his fourth wife in 1540, but then he immediately tried to figure out how to get out of their marriage. Mere months afterwards, she was offered a divorce, as well as the position of the king's sister. He also gifted her several homes and a yearly allowance. Anne was spared the utter humiliation of returning home the poor, rejected wife of a king. Anne knew a good deal when she saw one, so she stayed in England, single and happy, for the rest of her life. She was one of the most important women at court, remained friends with both her ex-husband and his daughters, and spent her time gambling and cooking. 
But towards the end of her life, Anne had a lingering health issue. Historians think the most likely explanation was cancer, although no autopsy was performed, so it's impossible to be sure. But it was clear that Anne was dying, so she made sure to get her affairs in order. She outlived Henry by 10 years, dying in 1557 when Mary I was on the throne. Anne's friendship with her stepdaughter, Queen, was so great that Mary ordered her to be buried in Westminster Abbey, an honor that none of Henry's other wives received. Anne Hyde died before her husband became King James II, but his second wife, Mary of Modena, would get the title of Queen Consort before losing it when James was overthrown in the Glorious Revolution of 1688. The couple and their children fled to the continent and spent the remaining years trying to regain the throne for either James or their son. Once she became a widow, Mary spent a lot of time in a French nunnery. In fact, she'd wanted to become a nun when she was younger before James decided he was going to marry her. The religious life suited her so well that some in France even brought up the possibility of sainthood for her. While that never happened, she was buried at the convent. In addition to their shared husband, Anne Hyde and Mary of Modena had another thing in common. They both died of breast cancer. Mary knew that she'd been ailing for years. In 1715, she traveled to Bar-le-Duc, ostensibly to see her son, but most likely because the area had a reputation for curing cancer. The trip was unsuccessful, though, as she died of her cancer in 1718 at the age of 59. Neither her son nor her husband were ever returned to the English throne. In 1821, Carolina Brunswick arrived at Westminster Abbey to be crowned Queen of England. Her long-serving father-in-law, George III, had died the year before, and her husband of 25 years was now King George IV. But the new king hated her, and she'd been told in no uncertain terms not to come to the coronation. In fact, the government had tried to bribe her to not even be in England at the time. I don't know, was she a looker? Obviously not. <laughs> But Caroline was still technically queen, and she wanted to be treated with the respect that the position commanded. So she pounded on the doors of the abbey and ordered the pages to let her in, but she didn't get her way. Eventually, she gave up and returned home. The stress of the event had clearly taken its toll on her. One day later, she collapsed, and within three weeks, she was dead at the age of 53. Considering what an embarrassment she was to George, many people thought he had poisoned her. However, it's generally accepted by modern historians that she had stomach cancer, although it's possible that her death might have been more immediately caused by something like a ruptured bowel. There are multiple royal figures known as Mary Tudor. The most famous of them is probably Mary I of England, also known as Bloody Mary. Her aunt, the youngest sister of Henry VIII, was also named Mary. When she was a teenager, Henry married her off for political reasons to the 52-year-old King of France, who then promptly died. When Charles Brandon, the man Mary had secretly been in love with all along, was sent to France to escort the widow back to England, the pair eloped. Henry was furious, but he eventually forgave them once they agreed to pay him a large sum of money. Mary's position made her an important person in the English court, but she started to attend fewer and fewer events, even as her husband constantly stayed by Henry's side. In 1528, she came down with a common disease at the time known as the sweating sickness and reportedly never fully regained her health after that. She was especially bothered by an intense pain in her side. She wrote to her brother the king, asking permission to see his personal doctor. Her husband also wrote to Henry, saying that she was in so much pain that she couldn't do anything but sit and cry. Historians believe that this unbearable pain was probably caused by cancer, although it was also possibly a symptom of tuberculosis. Either way, Mary died in 1533 at the age of 37. 